Escape. Douglas had taken the midnight goods to a station on the other railway. He was shunting ready for his return journey when he heard a faint hiss. That sounds like an engine, he thought. The hiss came again. This time it sounded almost despairing. Who's there? he asked. A whisper came. Are you Sir Topham Hatt's engine? Eh, and proud of it. Thank goodness. I'm Oliver. We're escaping to your railway, but we've run out of coal and I've no more steam. Is it from scrap you're escaping? Yes. Then I'll be glad to help you, but we're on work fast. Both crews joined in. They took off Oliver's side rods, wrote out transit labels, and chalked scrap everywhere they could. Douglas marshalled Oliver in front of his train. No time to turn around, he panted. I'm on, run tender first. Yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo, yelled a passing diesel. A steamer's escaping, yoo-hoo. Douglas puffed firmly on. Take no notice, he counselled. But they were stopped before they could clear the station throat. The foreman's lamp shone on Oliver. Aha, he explained. A western engine, his light flickered further back. A western auto coach and goods break too. You can't take these. Can we no, said Douglas's driver. They're all for us. See for yourself. Douglas's guard showed him the labels and papers. Oliver's crew, hiding in the coach, hardly dared to breathe. Same's in order, said the foreman grudgingly. But it's queer. Sure, and it is, began the guard. But I could tell you queerer. So could I, interrupted the foreman. Right, away, guard. A near fang, puffed Douglas with relief. We've had worse, smiled Oliver. We ran at night. Friendly signalmen would pass us from box to box when no trains were about. We got on well till Control heard about a mystery train. Then they tried to hunt us down. What did you do? A signalman let us hide on an old quarry branch. Driver, fireman and guard blocked the cutting with rubbish and levered one of the approach rails away. We stayed there for days with diesels baying and growling like hounds outside. I was very frightened then. Small blame to you, said Douglas feelingly. Presently they rumbled over the bridge and onto Sir Topham Hatt's railway. We're home! They can't catch you now! Tell Isabel and Toad, please. Douglas called out the news and heard a joyful ting-a-ling-a-ling, ting-a-ling-a-ling. He was surprised. Oliver chuckled. That's Isabel, he said. There is a bell on her, you see. She's clever. When we go out together, I pull one way and push the other. When I pull, I can see ahead. When I push, I can't. So Isabel keeps a good lookout and rings her bell to talk to me. You dare say! Douglas was impressed. About this tort, he continued. Is he? Hold your weesh, said his driver. Yon's the works. We must slip in unbeknownst and find a place for Oliver. Douglas tried hard to be quiet, but the night foreman heard them and had to be told their secret. I know just the place, he said and showed them a nice empty siding nicely hidden away. Oliver said, goodbye and thank you, and Douglas puffed away. Yon's an enterprising engine, he thought. I won away here with Donald, but I'd have been feared to do it on my own.